This is two inch Schedule 80, 2G position, TIG all the way. Here's the basic fit up. It's two inch Schedule 80, 35 degree bevels, eighth inch gap. Got four tacks on this thing. Sometimes you might be able to get away with less. Got them all nice and feathered on both ends. It's ready to weld. Got an eighth inch gap, zero land. We're gonna use ER70S6, one eighth wire for the root pass. The machine was set to 100 amps, full pedal. In the field, you would probably be using a scratch start rig for this, so you wouldn't have amperage control. But we're using a foot pedal just because we just got off an aluminum video, and we're just kind of pressed for time to get this one done. And so we took a few shortcuts. Another shortcut is if we've got it set up on a positioner here. And a lot of it is run without the positioner running, but sometimes for arc shots, it makes it a lot easier to run the positioner so that the camera can stay focused on the arc. ER70S6 filler makes a big difference on a joint like this. It seems to flow into that root a whole lot better than S2. If you have the choice for open roots, I highly suggest going with S6. A 1 8 gap, a 1 8 rod, and about 100 amps seems to do the job really nicely. We're using a number 5 cup and about 15 to 20 CFH of argon for, this, for the root pass. When you're using a number 5 cup on an open root pass, You've got to be careful not to have too much argon flowing. It can definitely set up a venturi effect and you can get some porosity. But about 15 CFH works pretty good on a number 5 cup. We'll switch over to a larger cup for the fill and the cover pass. You could probably go a good 10 to 20 amps hotter on this root pass, but at this heat, at 100 amps, you can just kind of take your time and just bear down on the tip of that rod with the tip of the electrode. Move nice and easy, nice and slow. And it's not hot enough to where it wants to keyhole out with you where you have to jam rod in there to fill up a gap or anything like that. This route probably takes less than five minutes to put in even at this slow rate, so there's no point in getting in a hurry. We're not really worried about what the route looks like from the outside. The inside is much more important. So before the hot pass, we'll wire brush the root and let it cool for just a minute or two. And then we'll take a look at the root after the hot pass. Even though it's called a hot pass, we don't always set the amperage hotter than the root. In this case, we're just keeping it the same. Oftentimes you'd go 10, 20, 30 amps hotter even. But the biggest concern is just not to mess up the root pass, to not melt through and suck back. You don't want to disrupt what you've done. You don't want to remelt the root pass. You don't want to melt through at all. And for that reason, you kind of don't want to spend a lot of time across the middle. You don't want to jump from side to side, but you want to kind of move quickly across the middle, keep the rod in the puddle, and don't hang around in one place too long. Just keep moving. This is my good friend Andrew Carden doing the welding today, and I'm running the camera. Andrew came for a visit, and we were able to film a few videos, and this is one of them. We did some other stuff like aluminum. We did a 5F aluminum tube to plate, a 5F 7018 tube to plate, a 6G test like this, and some more stuff. Okay, here's the root pass. When I worked for the Boilermakers in a fab shop, this is about what they wanted. They didn't want a lot of reinforcement on the inside. In fact, they would blow a ball through these joints to make sure you didn't have too much. This is above flush. It's tied in. This is what they wanted at the places I worked. Some places might want more. After cooling for a little while and a good wire wheeling, it's time for that two bead cap. We're slightly below flush, and so Andrew is going to have to really place those beads right in order to have enough metal for the cap. You don't want to have any low places. Nothing can be below flush on a cover pass like this. And so bead placement is going to be the ticket. So what Andrew is doing here is he's just barely overlapping that bottom edge, going almost all the way up to the top. And that way when he puts that second bead in there, he should have a little ledge to rest that on and he shouldn't have any low places. Still using 1 8 filler wire, ER70S6. Machine still set at 100 amps, but we switched over from a number five cup to a number seven cup just to give it a little bit more coverage. Not worried about having to reach it down into the root and hit those walls anymore, so a seven cup makes a little bit more sense here. Could easily go with an eight also, even something a little larger wouldn't hurt. 
this is one of those arc shots where we had to position her running at a slow speed so that we could stay focused on the puddle. And it lets us capture a nice long arc shot so you can really pay attention to the details. I work hard to try to get good arc shots. The reason I do that is that I know that it makes a video a lot more instructive. Let's do a quick wire wheeling of this before that very last bead. I like to use a drill motor with a wire wheel like this because it doesn't sling wire. With that slow RPM, you don't have to worry about slinging a piece of wire into your nose or your eyeball or something like that. All right, here comes the last bead on this two bead cap. Andrew's rock steady. Still using the 1 8 ER70S6, still at 100 amps. And we've got the positioner going at a slow speed for capturing this arc shot, too. Andrew's trying to just overlap the top edge of that hot pass while trying to come down evenly over that previous bead. I'm going to stop and brag on Andrew for just a minute here. He doesn't typically do this kind of work for a living. He's in the oil and gas industry distribution. Most everything he does is downhill 60-10, 70-10, 80-10. But he practiced and trained so much for world skills competitions that when you throw him on something like this, even if he hadn't done it in a year or two, he jumps right on it. And you would never know he hasn't done one of these in years. Andrew's a beast, a good man, and I'm glad he's my friend. All right, winding down here, the very end of that second bead, let's take a look at this thing. And I'll list all the details and settings on a slide at the very end here in just a few seconds. I think the 6G video will have posted by the time I post this, so I'll link it up about right here. And the settings and details are coming up. 2-inch Schedule 80 pipe, 35-degree bevels, 8-inch gap, 8-inch ER70S6 filler wire, set on 100 amps for the whole thing with the CKMT200.